Huzzah! What's going on guys? My name is Roman and welcome to my film cafe, a place where I talk about the latest films and TV shows and help you navigate this ever-expanding industry. And today I'm going to be talking about The Great, a new series on Hulu. I was excited to watch the series, first of all, because it's written by the same person who wrote The Favourite, and that movie was one of the best to come out in 2018. Secondly, The Great is important to me because it takes place in Russia, and it talks about Russian history, and as some of you might know, I am Russian, so this review is going to be slightly biased. The Great is a satirical comedic drama about the rise of Catherine the Great from the outsider to the longest reigning ruler in Russia's history. It's a fictionalized, entertaining, and fun story about an idealistic, romantic young girl who arrives in Russia for an arranged marriage with the Emperor Peter III. Being young and naive, she has to face a new world that's full of danger, unfairness, and outdated traditions, the world that she wants to change. And what she has to do is simply kill her husband, outsmart the church, get the army on her side, and convince the court that she is worthy to rule. In a way, it's a very modern story about basic human ambitions and desires. Incorporating historical facts occasionally, this series stars Al Fanning as Catherine the Great and Nicholas Holt as the Emperor Peter III. I haven't felt so conflicted about a show in a very long time, so I think I'll start with the least controversial element, the visuals. And Aretha Franklin's words describe it very well. Great gowns, beautiful gowns. And beautiful gowns indeed. The visual component is perfect. Everything from the costumes to interior locations and cinematography is pleasant to look at. Usually when it comes to TV, this is the aspect that creators don't pay much attention to. TV serves a different purpose than film. It's less about the art and more about the story. In this case, every shot was well composed and thought through. Locations are beautiful, however, they've been recycled from the favorite. If you haven't watched that movie, go and check it out, I highly recommend it. This show in general has the atmosphere, the look and the feel of the favorite, probably because it was made by one of the writers, Tony McNamara, who is also one of the executive producers on this series. In one of the interviews, he mentioned that he was fascinated with Catherine the Great as a historical figure, but also he wanted to make a show about modern day's problems and issues so that the viewers could somehow relate to it. It's based on a play that he wrote early in his career, but it's full of historical inaccuracies, mainly facts, events, different elements of Russian and European culture and history. Sometimes it seems like the writer didn't care about the truth at all, and he only uses this that particular element for the sake of a joke. For example, and no spoilers, Peter the Great wasn't Peter III's father, but he was his grandfather. Catherine never had a lover named Leo, and in one of the episodes, they used the Soviet song from the World War II era, which wasn't fitting. Different attributes of pop culture, like Dom Perignon Champagne or Moscow Mules, didn't exist back then, but the writers add them for a comedic effect. Similar to the favorite, the whole series is a satire on the privileged lives of the emperors and their court. It's funny in a very greedy way. Although it features historical figures and facts, at the beginning of each episode there is a remark saying that it's an occasionally true story. I can see how a lot of Russian people could be offended by this show. Catherine the Great is similar to Elizabeth I. She's an important monarch in Russian history and culture. Portraying her rise to power in such a brutal and tasteless way was unnecessary. She doesn't have to be in a position where she's shown to be having sex with her husband Peter while his friend is there and watching and talking about dogs, or if there's their aunt and she is watching, or like in general, in every sentence, you don't have to use F-bombs. Some people might think that the writer is a mock in Russian history and culture. But as Tony McNamara mentioned, the story was just inspired by this particular character, and the base of it is the character's impulse to get rid of her husband, which everyone, well, maybe not everyone, but a lot of people could relate to. All the ridiculousness serves the comedic effect to make the show funny. 
Ultimately, despite the historical nonsense, the writing is good, and drama and comedy are well balanced in this show. Another aspect of the show that's a little far-fetched is casting. Russians, particularly members of the royal court, are played by a very diverse cast, and not in a good way. Diversity matters, but not when you're telling a story about a certain period of time in a certain country. But then again, occasionally a true story. So the only casting decisions that matter are Al Fanning as Catherine and Nicholas Holt as Peter. Al is fantastic and her Catherine is very dynamic and passionate. When she arrives in Russia, she is naive and romantic, but after meeting Peter, she becomes determined and sly. Nick definitely had fun playing the character of Peter and making him idiotic and cruel. It's kind of like a parody of the King Joffrey from Game of Thrones. It's fun watching the two on screen challenging and playing off of each other. Huzzah! This word is used extensively throughout the series and honestly being Russian I have no idea what it means. So I checked it online and it's used to express joy, excitement and applause. It's coming from 16th century sailors and I suppose it's somewhere in Britain. Even after writing this review and looking at all the aspects of the show, I'm still conflicted. On the one hand, we have great visuals and acting on the Elf Fanning part. On the other, we have a loose interpretation of history and poor casting decisions. All in all, my rating for the grade is 7 out of 10. I think most people will enjoy it and have a laugh at too and hopefully go online and check out the real story of Catherine the Great. Currently it's streaming on Hulu, so go watch it and let me know what you think in the comments below. Subscribe to my channel, give this video a like, and come again soon! I was excited to watch this series. There have to be this fucking fire truck right now. Like, come on. Elemental. But after meeting Peter, she becomes determined and slow.